So we've been working in geometry and we've had to find the area of many different polygons. We did the square, the rectangle, parallelogram, triangle, trapezoid, and last but not least, we have our rhombus. So I can calculate the area of a rhombus. The area of a rhombus is half of the product of its two diagonals. So now if you look here, we have our example of a rhombus. You see D2 and D1, those are actually diagonals and the diagonals are what's within the actual rhombus and its measurements. And the, air, the, so we the formula for area is half the product of D1 and D2. Okay, so here we have our first rhombus with two different measurements for our diagonals. It says 18 inches for one diagonal and 11 inches for the other diagonal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug it straight into my formula. Area equals one half it doesn't really matter which diagonal you make, diagonal one or two, because you're multiplying them together anyway. So I have 18 and 11, okay? Now if I multiply it together, I have 18 and 11, which equals 198, and then I can bring down my half. It's kind of similar to when we did the trapezoid. Okay, now half of 198 gives us 99. So my area equals 99. And I'm not done, because I need something. I need my inches, my unit of measure. And we should already know that area is always squared. So my final answer is the area of this rhombus is 99 inches squared. All right, so we have Ms. Gilberto's work here, and we did see that she did get the area of 99 inches squared. But if you did notice, just like how last lesson, there's more than one way we can solve, same thing with the rhombus. There is another way that we can solve. So here, Ms. Gilberto multiplied first and then divided by two. But if you would like to, what I did here, I set it up, but I started by dividing by two. So I did 18 divided by two, which gave me nine. Then I brought down my 11 and then multiplied nine times 11 for my final answer of 99 inches squared. Same thing. But you could also flip your diagonals. So say you wanted to divide 11 first and you would have gotten five and five tenths. You can then multiply that by 18. Same thing, you can get 99 inches squared. So here we have three different ways that we could solve for the area of the rhombus. So here we have a word problem. This is also going to be your first independent practice. So I'll read it out loud. So it says that Cedric is constructing a kite in the shape of a rhombus. The spars of the kite measure 15 inches and 24 inches. How much fabric will Cedric need for the kite. So here we have the kite, also doubling as our rhombus, and our formula is right there. So take a second, you can pause the video, answer the question independently, see how we do. All right, here's the work from the independent practice. I drew the rhombus out, in this case it was a kite. I also used two different colors to show the two different diagonals that were included in the word problem. The first strategy that I used is here in red. What I did here, I substituted the two diagonals, I multiplied the two, they get 360. I brought down the half for my final step of dividing 360 by two, for my final answer of 180 inches squared, since we're solving for area. The second strategy that I use is here in blue. What I did, same thing. I substituted the two diagonals, however, I reversed the order. I did that because I decided to split the first diagonal in half for 12. So I put 24 there because if you split 24 by 2, you get a whole number. If you split 15 by 2, you get a decimal. So depending on what math you want to use, if you're going by mental math, it's easier when we use whole numbers. So I divided the first number by 2. In this case, I now have 12 times 15. And that also gives me the 180 inches squared. So depending on what strategy you used, we should have gotten the same answer of 180 inches squared. Okay, so now that Mr. Mione went over with you how to find the area of a rhombus, you have your independent practice, you're doing it on your own. But the format is a little different. Here we're just giving you what diagonal one is and what diagonal two is. So there are two things that you can do. What you could do for number one, you could create an actual rhombus if you want and input the diagonals and then substitute it into the area formula or you could just substitute straight into the area formula. It's totally up to you. And I just want you to take notice really quick. If we look back at number two, there is a decimal. And for number four, there's a fraction. You can convert them vice versa. Just don't let them intimidate you. You got this. Okay, so now that you did all of your independent practice, here's number one's answer. 
Mr. Mioni plugged straight into his diagonals. He had half of 35 and 12. He did 35 times 12 first, he got 420. Then he divided that by half or by two, same thing. And he got his area to be 210 meters squared. Now once again, just like trapezoids, you could do it a little differently. But let's go on to number two. Number two, he plugged in his di diagonals. Now remember we have nine and five tenths here, which could be a little challenging. And we have 14. He multiplied the two together first. He got 133. He brought down his half. Half of 133 is 66 and 5 tenths inches squared. Now, not only did he do it this way, but he also did it another way, and he put his 14 first. So what he did was half of 14 was 7. He brought down his 9 and 5 tenths, and 7 times 9 and 5 tenths is 66 and 5 tenths inches squared, which still gives us the same answer. Now, here we have number 3. I did this part, I plugged in my 10 and my 18, I multiplied 10 and 18, I got 180. Half of 180 is 90, and my final answer is 90 meters squared. And for number four, we had a fraction. I'm gonna plug in eight and one fourth and 40. I decided to make my fraction a decimal. I like decimals a little better. If you decided to keep it as a fraction, that's perfectly fine. So what I did was I did eight and 25 hundredths times 40, it got me 330. I brought down my half, so half of 330 is 165 feet squared. And here's my little note that I converted it in case you forgot what I did. All right, guys, that's the end of the lesson three. So if you have any questions or concerns, or maybe if you even spotted a mistake somewhere, you got to let us know. You can reach us on Pupil Path, and we'll be on Google Classroom. So we'll talk to you then.